So what happens next? still alive well they are Asians I guess they can't die but y'all had enough yet do you need a little bit more punishment that she might regain the blessing of light I had foreseen but she has grown so strong in it as to deny us our power let us withdraw La Habrea. That power remains to us, at least. Oh no, you fucking don't! And guess what? Guess what? Clench between my butt cheeks. Yeah, thanks for this, Estadian, by the way. You're a real bro. It's almost like you knew. Yeah, there's no other reason for him to give us this other than the obviously plot exposition for us to have this here. Um, I don't really have much complaints about him giving it to us because, well, we could have found use for it, so. So, you harness the eye's power. A pity you spent it all. What will you do now, hero? Um, that's the second one of you fuckers I've killed. You're next. Mark my words, eventually, eventually. So, not even the vaunted warrior of light can unmake an Asian without relying upon mortal contrivances. Hi. I have a score to settle with you fuckers. You. In the distant past, King Thorden and his knights twelve fought and defeated Nidhogg. Though the victory cost them dear, they were rewarded with a great prize, the Dread Worm's Eyes, both of which have since been held in the Holy See's safekeeping. The eye you possess was Nidhogg's left, and long has it served as the source of the Azure Dragoon's might. As for its twin... Yeah, about that. We still haven't solved that mystery. Well, you kind of just told us you've been keeping it, but where? It has lain here, joined to the person of Haldreth, the first Azure Dragoon. For though he learned to harness its power, he was ultimately consumed by it. Even in death, his body decays not. A pitiful end for a fabled hero. That's creepy as fuck! My Asian friend, long have you and your kind sown the seeds of chaos by teaching mortals the secrets of summoning. But if you assumed that we would meekly serve as your pawns, then you are gravely mistaken. You would raise a hand against us. Oh, hell yes. By taking unto my flesh the soul of the legendary King Thorden, I can become a god! Ah, newsflash, the king kind of died against Nidhogg. In a rather stupid way, mind you. And this is not how primals work, but apparently he doesn't know that. Okay, really? 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 
Are we suffering a bit from tiny dick syndrome over here? And we're all just gonna stand here? Oh God who knows not cessation, whose being is sustained by a millennium of fervent prayer and the eyes nigh bottomless reservoir of ether. What? Um, yeah, La Habrea, that's how this works. Your contempt for man has proven your undoing, Asian. For my first act as God King, I do hereby sentence you to die! Why hasn't he tried to escape yet? I mean, not that I'm complaining, mind you, but... For the most part, kind of already did that. Be they sown by Asian, Dragon, or Prime, wheresoever the seeds of chaos threaten to quicken, I shall excise them with my divine blade and bring order to the world. I and become that which you abhor, warrior of light. If you would take issue with my godhood, I shall answer you with my blade. Well, actually, we became friends with somebody who got in this thing. Want to be friends now? Well, actually, no, fuck you. You killed my friend, so no. Cowards. Yeah, notice how Halder's body is just suddenly just gone. <laughs> but whatever. That's something we really don't need to squabble about. So yes, we have a new duty. The Singularity Reactor. So, yeah, um, score one for Thord in there. And... Even though it's rather kind of a bit anticlimactic that we do not get to deal La with La Habrea personally, considering all the shit he's put us through and and how symbolic it would be for us to do it, I, I actually really kind of like that the game is just having none of that shit. It just bam, it just it just, just Thornton just swoops in and takes care of all that nonsense. Uh, so I really kind of I actually kind of love that, despite how anticlimactic it does seem. Brothers, the time is come to call upon the true power of the Heaven's Ward. Bring it, you fuckers. Oh, they're gonna go all Incredible Hulk on us. Oh, I'm so scared. Fight me if you will, warrior of light. Y'all became ugly too. I care not. All who stand against me will be destroyed. Be they servants of the darkness or the light. 
By my blessing shall all men be sanctified, and an endless era of peace begin. Vice and conflict shall cease to be. You reject my divinity, yet what have you to offer my people in its stead? Bitter truth? Virtuous suffering? Um, they have been suffering virtuous suffering by your hands and your lies all these years. So how do you like that, in Apples? No matter. If you will leave your cause just, I call upon you to defend it with your life. So you want to settle this the oldish guardian way, huh? Alright, bring it. Bring it. I've slain your kind before. So this battle is actually going to go rather quickly, um, merely by virtue of... Uh, you were not level synced in here. So he's going to actually fall really quickly. But going on what I was talking about before, with in regards to La Habrea, I, I really very much enjoy how Thornton has just been fucking with them this whole time. Like, for once, somebody is not having any of the Assian shit. And is just letting themselves be, like, strung along, not only just... Just play the Assians, well, partially because it's a dumb idea to, to, to directly define them until you have the, the actual means to do so. But it certainly helps to explain, you know, why he, at the beginning of the game, you know, freely confessed to us that, yeah, he has been entertaining Assians, and hey, what do we think of them and whatnot? Because perhaps in the end, maybe, just maybe, we had an effective way of dealing with them that could potentially help him down the line. Now, nothing ever directly comes of that, per se. Um, it's, it's really hard to say in general, because, well, our character doesn't really talk. But, but e even so, it's, it's just... I'm, I'm really glad, even if it is fucking Thornton over here, that somebody else gets a shot in at the Assians. I really actually appreciated that. Uh, even though the Assians do kind of get what they wanted, in the end, out of him, but... Just to be ultimately betrayed in the end, it's just, it's just so, especially because it's La Habrea, it's just so satisfying. Now, Thornton himself does kind of get robbed of a bit of character development, but I believe what he does have to work with is probably pretty effective. Yeah, see, he's already almost dead. Now, we're going to have an ad phase anyway that's going to come up very shortly. It's going to go several minutes. So, I'm going to talk really fast here. Um, I'm... I am actually a little bit of a Thornton sympathizer because as much as his, his uh, planned regime is going to be a bit totalitarian, at the same time, if we don't know peace and suffering, yeah, that kind of sucks, but at the same time, if we don't have to constantly deal with wars and Eldritchian horrors, are we really the worse off for it? Now, in the end, the answer is a somewhat vague no. Because you're given the impression, even though it's it's kind of a bit a little subtle in this thing, you're given the impression that Heidelin favors free will. That probably explains why she's done actual shit to help explain, you know, what we actually need to do about the Assians other than vague instructions to vanquish the darkness and whatnot, nor has she actually explained to us what the fuck the Echo actually does. It will be a massive help, Heidelin. What the fuck? But, but I get the distinct impression because of those revelations that she does... The fact that she doesn't interfere until uh, extreme circumstances come into play, that she actually favors free will and that the children, her children of her, of her, her planet and her world uh, forge their own destinies. And obviously with Thornton, that's not going to happen. But again, at the same time, it gives a little bit, bit of a gray area about are we really truly better off one way or the other? Now, if, now again, of course, the answer is supposedly, oh, you know, we're the good guys and whatnot, and we're better than they are, and, and whatever, but... So nothing really ever comes of it, and he doesn't really get the moral gray area. He really kind of, but well, kind of earns, I guess, for just for lack of a better term. But I like that it does exist, and he does get a couple, he, you know, amongst the villains, he, they do get in some good victories. I mean, they kill Borchafon, for crying out loud. And not only that, on top of that, they, they kill La Habrea, which is awesome in and of itself. 
Now, yes, here's your obligatory Knights of the Round reference. I have nothing to say on top of it because of, besides that. Uh, however, since I'm thinking about it now, a lot of people were actually somewhat surprised and felt this came out of nowhere in the whole Archbishop becoming a primal thing. Despite the fact that it's pretty much the very reason we go after them in the first place. They figure this out right after we rescue Emmerich from the vault. And it's actually mentioned a few times in brief passing in between. So I'm not sure why people were kind of bitching about like, Holy shit, he became a primal. This came out of nowhere. No, it didn't. It did not. What, was it kind of rushed in a little bit too quickly at the end? Maybe. Because he, they, he, they, once they get the key, they kind of disappear from the plot temporarily. So I can well give the uh, the the the, 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 the semi-poor pacing uh, a little bit of leeway there. So, how does it feel to be on the shitty side of the blessing, you fuckers? Did you really think you were going to spare any better advanced me than every other primal? How? How can this be? A millennium of prayer and the eye's power combined? And still you stand! We killed Ninhog, who was infinitely older. Can't believe you're all still glossing over this massive point here. That alone should be a testament to my strength, even though Sandy was helping us, but that's neither here nor there. I am your doom, motherfucker. Who? What are you? I am the warrior of light. You can just die. Okay, thanks. Bye! Where is my punch card? All in a day's work. kudos to that tank but I love how the sword is still sitting here on the ground I love that it's a very very lovely touch so that just leaves the Imperials to deal with I guess oh hi Astidian it is over then. I had hoped that mine would be the hand to end it. But knowing you, there was little chance of that. Uh, where's everyone else, by the way? Yeah, here's your eye back. Thanks. It was of great use to us. It would seem the eye has served you well. That it has, my friend. I do like how he has to pull it out rather than just like just picking it out. Twin. At long last. Now what are we gonna do with them? All that remains is to take them beyond the reach of man and dragon both. With this task accomplished, my toil shall finally be at an end. What? Hey, 
So yeah, this is why nobody has been harping on about Nidhogg actually being dead and all, because obviously he's not. And it's really a huge disappointment to me because ev so many people everywhere, oh hi my good Zomer, everywhere was like warning Astinia and whatnot, and even Yasola at the end was like blah 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 blah, like everything was, like, there was so way too much foreshadowing that this is gonna, ha what's gonna happen. On top of the whole, you know, he's a Kane XP and they're, you know, the whole brainwashing thing anyway on top of that. But I really wish they kind of laid low with them. this. Because it would seem actually all the more surprising at the end, you know, lead you into a false sense of security that they weren't going to go this route. They'd be teasing it a little bit, but they were actually not going to go the whole Istinian, you know, going the cane route and being brainwashed whole routine. And then they go and fucking do it anyway. They should have, honestly, they should have either not mentioned it at all or just stayed extremely low about it. Because it just made it way too obvious. And again, combined with the fact that you know, nobody is actually making any sort of deal about, holy shit, we fucking killed Nidhogg. Again, because it turns out he's not dead. That's the only reason why to not harp on this fact. And they really could have made a much more, uh, Jeez, much more of actual there. surprise out of this had they actually laid fucking low. Oi! Like, it, like, it, it genuinely upset. I love how I'm riding, like, half sideways on this thing. <laughs> God's... Damn it, do you always have to cut it so bloody close? Then I'm talking over here. Talking about my disappointment and the fact that they could have handled this differently. And it genuinely upsets me. Don't you go fucking playing this cheery music. Nidhogg is on the fucking loose again, you dickheads. Did you not see him fly away? And thanks, Yashola and Alphano, for coming to, coming to my aid and all. It would seem she has done it again. You know, only Astinian actually bothered Was to show there ever up. Any doubt? Yeah, thanks for that. And what about the Imperials? They're still here. Let us return to Ishgard. Our friends will be eager to learn the battle's outcome and welcome back their champion. Hi, Imperials now have free reign of the place. Not gonna mention this. I mean, we stopped the immediate threat for the time being, but we still have another one. Guys? Guys? And also, are you not gonna question this giant dragon we're riding on? Where you is guys weren't here when I acquired him. Gu guys, guys, father of dragons? Floating beside us? Anybody? Hello? I'm surprised they're not shooting him down from the sky. Like seriously, there is a dragon coming right toward your city. You don't know it's one of the good guys yet. Well, sort of good guys. I dare say you are the first soul in Ishgardian history to arrive in our city upon Dragonback. This scene shall be remembered for a thousand years to come. Alright, someone find me an artist who need to paint this. It's going on a mural. As we had feared, the Archbishop summoned the soul of King Thorden and to himself, and thence became a primal. But he and his knights are no more, thanks to the Warrior of Light. What, did I actually, like, shout this at to you from, from, from Dragonback? On the journey back. Your struggles are not yet over, mortals. Uh, whom do I have the pleasure? Oh, introductions. Oh, you are smooth, Emmerich. I am Midgard Sommer. I have journeyed with Heidelin's champion and observed her deeds in the conflict between man and dragon. Yeah, is no one actually going to question whether the fact that this is Midgard Sommer or not? I mean, as far as they're aware, because almost nobody knows he's been following us, his corpse is still in Silver Tear Lake. Are, are they aware that he has these kind of powers? Is it just assumed, considering how old and ancient he is? I honestly, I have no idea. It's, it's never mentioned. Tell me, children of Thordon. Do you desire peace? I mean, I'm guessing that nod we just gave is all the information they need that, yeah, he's telling the truth, but whatever, whatever. Yes, we desire peace. 
Oh, you guys are even smoother, man. Get down on your knees, you fuckers! My people have committed unspeakable atrocities against dragonkind. Even against our own. Would that we could undo these wrongs. But we cannot. Tataru? Come on. Be that as it may, the future yet presents a chance to begin anew. Our nation has broken free of the shackles of a false faith, and Nidhogg shall lead his kindred against us no more. Uh, about that? I doubt not that it will require much effort and perseverance. But tis my belief that in time, Ishgard will again become a place where man and dragon may abide together in harmony. All right, who wants to be who wants to be dragon waifu again and get eaten? In? I shall remember thy words. Yet be warned, Nidhogg's soul liveth on. His unbridled rage hath claimed for its vessel the one thou callest the Azure Dragoon. Astinian. Yeah, nobody's gonna be like, holy shit. Doubt not, but that Nidhogg will call out to his brood ere long, nor that they shall answer him. Steal yourselves, for the true test is yet to come. Not a holy shit, we have to go through this again? Come what may, we will never cease to believe. Anybody? Upon the souls of they who have sacrificed themselves to pave the way for peace, we will never abandon our cause. Kind of a big revelation here, guys? A thousand year war cannot be ended in a day. It may take generations. What thou dost begin, thy children must continue. Entrust unto them thy hopes and dreams, that peace may reign again and forevermore. Well, I'm glad you became a bro in the end. What are you gonna do now, though? We're, I guess, not under your protection or guidance anymore. I kind of liked having you perched on my shoulder, even if you'd actually didn't do anything. So, what do we do now? I mean, we we kind of murdered our archbishop and his cronies. So, what what happens with the system of government now? Oh, hi, guys. Let all here present attest that Sir Emmerich, acting on behalf of the Archbishop, has appended his signature. I do hereby declare that from this day forth, the Holy See of Ishgard shall once more be counted a member of the Eorzean Alliance. Is everybody okay with this? Let our nations move forward as one and stand united against the Galian Empire. I mean, I think this is a good thing, but is everybody okay with this? Are they suddenly, like, gonna be okay with outsiders being their friends and stuff, and what's more? I mean, I mean, they, they really- For the future of Eorzea! They really don't go into this. For, For the future, future of Eorzea! And not that they necessarily need to, because most people don't give a fucking shit about politics in this regard, especially in a video game. But at the same time, it's it's a little bit frustrating because besides making friends with the Kilda and her crew and you know making friends with Sir Emmerich and, and, and at least getting some change for the lower class and, and whatnot essentially besides that we've kind of made friends in regards to Soma here what's mi mildly frustrating is in the end we're honestly right back where we started 
Ninhog is once again on the loose. Great. So now we're gonna fight that war all over again. And needless to say, we're down a few friends as a result. And we've only gained one of them back. Hmm. A noble monument to a noble soul. And I think this scene is very sweet. So it's both frustrating, but also actually kind of refreshing that this is actually a pretty somber and bittersweet ending for us. I mean, yeah, we no longer have to deal with the Archbishop lying. People are from here. Lord Orshafon can watch over all of Ishgar. Uh, people are aware of like the truths and the lies that the Holy See has hidden behind for a thousand years and whatnot. And in the end, in the long term, I think we're going to be better off. But in the short term, it has been a long and arduous journey, and we have lost much and more along the way. Yeah, that. Yet come what may, we must stay true to our purpose and press on. <laughs> That's right, you two. It's high time we got back to rebuilding the Scions. That's right, you tell them, Tadaru. Which means we're going to need money, and lots of it. But yeah, again, it's, it's, it's half frustrating and half kind of actually refreshing that they don't go the, oh, everything is hunky-dory happy ending. Yeah, we, 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 we've scored a few points, we've lost a few, and probably only my most disappointing thing about this ending is that in regards to Nidhogg, we're pretty much back where we started, uh, which, so which half renders everything we did up until tale. the first two acts of the game kind of moot. However, tumultuous days yet lie ahead for Ishgard. After a thousand years under the yoke of the church, the people take their first tentative steps into the unknown. Yeah, but we still have to deal with dragons, though. And though they spy a glimmer of peace upon the horizon, Nidhogg's vengeful shadow yet remains to darken the way. Edmond, I just said that. I said I've been talking about for the last five minutes. Be that as it may. So long as the young commander of the Temple Knights and his heroic companions are there to guide them, the people may hold fast to hope. The hope that one day, true peace will return to Ishgard, and that man and dragon may live in harmony once more. Let the deeds writ herein never be forgot, that they may inspire generations yet unborn to strive ever heavensward. Can I get a medal or something? Maybe? No? All right, fine. So yeah, here we just have the credits so we can, we can skip that. Oh, hi, Elidibus. I haven't seen or heard from you in a while. Yep, yeah, sorry about that. Oh, wait, no, I'm not. Bested by mortals in their attempt to initiate the Eighth Rejoining. That they should be so complacent. And now it falls to me to deal with the consequences. Without intervention, the balance between light and darkness will begin to shift, placing our mission in jeopardy. Eidolon's champion has grown too strong. Her might encroaches upon the realm of gods. Equilibrium must needs be restored. The time has come for you and yours to join the fray. 
warrior of darkness. Oh, snap. What's going on with the gobbies? Okay, I see Sid. I see Yastola. What are they doing here? I mean, I can understand Yastola coming back. I mean, she might be eager to see how her former home is, is shaping Remind up. Me. But why, why Sid? Is there no rest for the righteous? Because they care, Master Garland. Is Sid just here because he's bored? Sid is friend too, can he be citizen as well? Wait, like, what's happening? Okay, that thing is huge. Ah, of all the things they could have picked to play with, that's not a toy, you bloody fools. It's a primal. How do you know this? I don't see no you know the fear of goggles on right now. Somewhere I'd say it's just a giant robot. Hey, you know the Algons didn't build this shit or something. So, most of you are not dumb, but yes, that is Alexander, which we will not be dealing with for quite some time. Sorry to disappoint you. I have separate plans for that. But yeah, I'm not really happy with how that comes right the hell out of nowhere right at the end. I wish it would have been, um, well, I guess, uh, Coil was, was handled kind of the same way because Bahamut does roar at the end of the credits. But at least it's relevant to what's going on in the meantime. It comes right the fuck out of nowhere, but at the same time, it's not like a separate scene. Like, there's no explanation why Yastola and, and Sid are just hanging around the gobbies in, in up right outside of Idleshire when all of a sudden this suddenly happens. And I think there was a little bit better way they could have integrated it. Yeah, that happened rather quickly. Oh, do not sell yourself short, young man. Pun not attended. I mean, half of this was your idea to let's go make friends, let's go make friends, and a bunch of the times it, it actually worked. Yeah, we're kind of screwed right now, but take victories where you got them, I guess. Yeah, and we also find and kind of left the Garleans in Azisla. Access to Alagon technology. I mean, with their, with their airship kind of down there, a little bit stuck there, but who's to say what kind of technology they're going to get a hold of while they repair the ship 
and Allig, you know, as is law, and the Allegons have no want of technology from which to help them repair said ship and adapt to it, so it might be a good idea for us to handle that. Maybe? Maybe? I'm just saying? Uh, it's one of the- another kind of disappointment that it is gonna be quite some time before we actually do anything about that. I mean, granted, we have bigger fish to fry for the time being, and at least directly, uh, the Empire is, is not an immediate threat, because... Unless something actually happened in the interim between when they left the Sea of Clouds and when they traveled to Asisla, uh, Emperor Varus is with them, so he's kind of stuck up there too, so he's really not able to give that many orders to his underlings. So, which kind of may cause a problem because eventually it's going to leave his underlings to their own devices and whatever. But at least for, for the immediate short period of the time, the Garleans are not a direct threat. But the more we kind of sit on this, the bigger problem that's going to become. And it, it is kind of a disappointment in the 3.x series that it, it's really, for the most part, left a bit unaddressed. But I think I've I've spewed enough verbal diarrhea for the time being. I think I've pretty much covered everything I want to talk about, at least as far as 3.0 is concerned. Any uh, if I do end up actually having any additional thoughts that I that I d did not have time or just for for lack of the speed of content and whatever didn't actually get through, I'll just have a, um, some of the points listed in in, in the video description. Uh, if you want to take hold of that. I, I, I may or may not. It, it really depends on what else I may think about between now and when this episode is actually edited and posted. But until then, uh, next time we will actually continue on because this is where the next patch 3.1 actually takes up. We're now level 60. Hooray! We're awesome. We're still going to keep our look. We're still going to keep our glamour. And hopefully, hopefully we can continue our search for our friends. And hopefully we will not lose any more in the process. So thank you for watching for the time being, my friends. And I hope you will continue to watch going forward. And I shall see you then. Let's see where our adventures take us.